In this video, we'll look at adding or subtracting, or adding and subtracting rational expressions. If you haven't already done so, check out uh, the videos involving multiplying and dividing rational expressions, as they're fairly essential to understanding this topic. So before we talk about rational expressions, let's recall a little bit about fractions. When we are adding fractions, what we have to do is we have to have a common denominator. So if I'm looking at 3 and 4, we have to somehow make a common multiple with those. And something we can always do, especially with numbers, is we can just multiply by the missing number to make a common denominator. And this would make it to where, instead of looking at this as 2 thirds plus 3 fourths, we can turn it into 8 twelfths plus 9 twelfths, which we can in turn write as 17 twelfths. Now, we're going to go through the same process with rationals. This is kind of the guiding thought. We have to find a common denominator, and then from there we can combine like terms, do those kind of things like we did here. So let's look at an example. First we have 8 over x squared plus 2x plus 1, and we're going to add to that 4 divided by x squared plus 3x plus 2. Now looking at this originally, it looks like a mess, and it kind of is. So the idea here is we need to make common denominators. Now I don't know if I necessarily want to multiply this whole expression times the 8 and this whole expression times the 4 to make my common denominator. There might be a simpler way. So if we have an expression like this, it's in quadratic form, we can most likely factor it, or there's a good chance that we can, especially most textbooks, that's how they um, make these problems. So I'm going to rewrite this one on the left here as 8 divided by x plus 1 times x plus 1. And then I'm going to look at this expression on the right. We'll keep the 4 as is. And I'm thinking this, I'm looking at factors of 2 that add to 3. That would be, or no x squared there, just x plus 1 times x plus 2. Now if I'm looking at this, I'm looking at the factors, there are technically two x plus 1's here, and there's an x plus 2 here and an x plus 1 here. They have a common factor. So then what I can do is I can, instead of having all of this with two denominators, I can say, okay, well let's do an x plus 2 here, and remember, whatever I multiply the bottom by, I have to do the top, because we're getting a common denominator. And then likewise, this one's missing an x plus 1, which as long as I multiply both top and bottom by the same number, it's still going to maintain these expressions. Now again, looks like I'm making things more complicated, but what's going to happen here is I can combine my denominators now into x plus 2 times x plus 1 times x plus 1. And if you felt so inclined, you could write the x plus 1 squared. Now, what I can do is I can say, okay, I'm looking at this part, 8 times x plus 2 plus 4 times x plus 1. I'm making kind of a jump step here to just kind of make it fit into the video. But the idea is I would then combine the numerators with addition and subtraction. Kind of like our last example where we're talking about twelfths. I don't necessarily have to write the 8 twelfths and the 9 twelfths. I can write it as 8 plus 9 all divided by 12. Same idea here. Now what we can do is we can distribute this 8 and 4 through. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it to where I can possibly combine like terms on the top. I would suggest leaving the denominator as is. Maybe if you feel like it, you can write it like so, x plus 1 squared. But if you have it as x plus 1 times x plus 1, that's totally correct. So I'm going to distribute in 8x, or the 8 to the x plus 2, which is going to make 8x plus 16. And then likewise, I'm going to distribute the 4 in here to the x plus 1, which is going to give me plus 4x plus 4, which I can then simplify my numerator just a bit more by combining the like terms and that would be the same as 12x plus 20, all divided by x plus 2 times x plus 1 squared. Now I would suggest doing the simplification in the numerator because if this boiled down to be x plus 2, 
up the top, then we could possibly cancel something out and make it even simpler on ourselves. But for now, that is as good as it gets. That's as simple as we can make it. Again, wouldn't necessarily worry about expanding out the denominator as it's very beneficial to have it in factored form. And we'll talk about that, especially when we get to talking about graphing these expressions. So let's talk about a subtraction case. Before we get into the uh, rational expression side of it, let's look at just a number. So if we're taking 7 eighths minus 2 fifths, there's a couple of rules of, or schools of thought here. The first would be to just treat it as we would the addition. To subtract, we need a common denominator, again, which I'm thinking we can multiply the 7 eighths by 5 over 5, and we can multiply the 2 fifths by 8 over 8 to achieve that. So I'll have 35 over 40 is, or minus, Um, looks to be 16 fortieths, which then we can subtract uh, 16 from 35, which would be 19 over 40. Now the other school of thought is we can treat this like we would addition. The difference being we're going to take 7 eighths plus a negative 2 over 5. And now, if you're looking at numbers, it doesn't make a lot of sense to do that. But if we're talking uh, rational expressions, sometimes it can be easier to just change the sign of the numerator so that we can kind of work with it as much as possible. That way we don't have to worry about a bunch of sign flips. The choice is yours, and we can kind of outline the merits of both methods here. So let's take a look at this example now. Now, similar to dealing with addition, we need to find a common denominator. And to do that, let's go ahead and take a look at factoring our denominator expressions. So I'm just going to rewrite them. So I'm going to have 3 over looks to be x plus 3 times x plus 3. And then we're going to look at the one on the right. So it's going to be minus 2 over x plus 3 times x minus 3. Now, you can treat this as you would, instead of writing it as minus 2, you can write it as plus a negative 2 over x plus 3 times x minus 3. And that boils down to personal preference. It all depends on how you like to deal with the negatives. Uh, for the intents of this video, I'm going to go ahead and just run with it as subtraction. If you would like, though, you can bring this in and change it to subtraction, or change it to addition with negatives. It's your call. So I'm looking at this, and on this side I have an x minus 3, and on this side I have 2x plus 3. So this side needs an x minus 3 to be common, and this side needs an x plus 3 to be common. Now what I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. So I must multiply the red expression by x minus 3, and i got to multiply the blue expression by x plus 3. So let's go ahead and do that. This piece is going to turn into... Uh, 3 times x minus 3 all over x minus 3 times x plus 3 squared. And again, you can write that as x plus 3 times x plus 3. I'm just doing it this way to save some writing. And we're going to subtract off 2 times x plus 3 all over x, minus th or x plus 3 squared times x minus 3. Now, I've, I've shown it here to just kind of demonstrate that you can write them both as two fractions, we can ultimately jump the step and write it as a single fraction, which I will do so right now. So let's rewrite it, and I'm going to go ahead and distribute as well. So I'll have 3x minus 9 for this chunk, minus 2x plus 6. Now, I'm putting this in parentheses because I am subtracting off this entire chunk. It's very important when we do the subtraction that you do that. That way you distribute the negative all the way through. The other option would be to change all the signs first. So put a negative 2 in front of the expression here, kind of like we had. Up top is the other option. And distribute that negative 2 through. Then you wouldn't have to worry about parentheses with the negative here, but I'm just showing you here just to demonstrate the subtraction method. And then I can say all of this is going to be divided by x minus 3 times x plus 3. 
And now at this point, we can combine some like terms. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of make a note to myself. This is going to be negative 2x minus 6. We're just distributing the negative through. So then I'm looking at combining like terms, which means I'm going to have x minus 15 over x minus 3 times x plus 3 squared. And again, you could write that as x plus 3 times x plus 3. And again, it worked out to where there wasn't any cancellation at the top. But again, if it would have worked out to be an x plus 3 or an x minus 3, then we could have reduced even further. For now, this is as good as it gets. And that's a video on adding and subtracting rational expressions. I know there's a lot there, so feel free to go back and, and re-watch these, really break down the steps. There's, there's a lot of mechanics here, but it really boils down to find a common denominator and then combine like terms.